Good morning. Good morning. We are going to stand and open up with our God. Please join me in our call to worship and prayer of the day. This will be read responsibly. I will read the parts that are in the light print, and you will respond with what is in bold. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts and as a garden causes what is sown to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations to His glory forevermore. Good and heavenly Father, Lord, we come to You on this day that You have made. We come and rejoice in Your great name, in Your glory, in the greatness of all that You are and all that You have done for us. Fathers, we come, we open wide our hearts and our minds to You, and we ask that Your Spirit move here among us. 
Lord, to pour your love, your affection, and your grace into our hearts. Father, that we would know here in this time and this hour how precious we are in your sight. And Lord, just the great uh, benefits that you have conferred upon us and the great grace you have given us and the blessing when you have called us your children. Father, help us to glorify you here today, Lord. Move your spirit in our spirits that we may lift up a mighty praise to your name. And all God's people said, Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing hymn number 293, This Is My Father's World. Please be seated. Good morning. Or today, appropriately, I should say, Happy Father's Day. I want to extend a good Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there and for all that you have done for us and to um, just really just pouring quality into our lives and making us the men and women that we are today. Truly, we could not be here without you. And of course, we couldn't be here without that great example of fatherhood our own Father in heaven, our own God and King. And so we welcome you here in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, on this the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, if you are a visitor here, uh, joining us here in person, um, anything you need to follow along with the service today can be found right here in your bulletin. Um, if you're watching this online or a little bit later on in the week, um, anything you need to know to join in the service is going to appear at the screen at the right time. I uh, do have a few announcements, um, not a whole lot this morning, but a few I'd like to point to your attention. Um, we are in the summer of Psalms, uh, going through a uh, series on the book of Psalms this summer. And actually, we got a reading guide as well. Uh, you probably should have gotten it by now. If not, I think we still have some left. Uh, this is your Psalms reading guide for the summer as we uh, go through and explore this beautiful and uh, wonderful book in the Bible. Um, also, don't forget your assignment that I'm um, supposed to write a psalm sometime this summer. So I hope you all are working on that. We do have a few already, and hopefully I'll be able to share those with you uh, very soon in the near future. Um, also, like today, um, today y'all know we've talked about work camp a little bit. Maybe y'all heard that a time or two over the last, I don't know, three years. Um, but it's starting today. Today, work camp starts today. So all that hard work we put into it is finally going to come to fruition, and uh, work camp is going to start. And uh, um, we still need a little bit of help. Um, if you have some time this week um, for some, uh, some site coaches, site leaders, um, actually anything that you can do, we need probably to get done. So any talent you have, we can put it to good use. I mean, for example, my wife asked me, she said, where do you want to help? And I said, listen, find out the best place you think my talents will be used. So she put me on the trash crew. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that says either about my talents or my wife's perception of my talents. I don't know. She's not as impressed with me as she used to be. So, but what I'm saying is we can use you anywhere. Um, so I think especially for some site coaches, if you know anything about construction or we still need help on the trash crew as well. So if you can do things like that, just uh, please contact Liz also for hospitality, maybe greeting um, coming in. Yep, just talk to Liz. She knows. And also you might have noticed we had a few people here with red shirts on. Um, 
These are some of the work camp, the red shirt staff is what they're called, aptly named, of course. And uh, we greet you, and we're glad you're here with us to, uh, to worship together. And um, so take a moment to greet them and thank them for coming in and helping making this uh, work camp uh, work so well. So the next time you're going to hear about it is next Sunday when we talk about what an awesome work camp it was. And then we got all the projects done, and everything went off without a hitch. So. That being said, I'd like to invite the youth and the leaders down um, so we can get a chance to commission them uh, for work camps. All the youth and leaders, please. That's y'all. And kids, I'd like y'all to come down to this front row here so you can get a good look at this as well. Okay, we'll do it on this side. All right, these are... Youth and leaders that are going to be joining us at uh, work camp this year. Um, I'm going to let Liz talk a little bit about what's going to happen and uh, what they're going to do, and then we're going to do their official commissioning. All right, so y'all have probably heard this before, but we'll just do a real quick recap. So today we're going to head over to Leesville to the camp, and we'll get to meet our red shirt staff, all of them, and get to meet all the other campers, and tomorrow we start work on... Uh, 32 houses now for the week, a lot of big, big projects, and so we're just asking that you guys continue to pray for us. I know you've been praying for the work camp for a while now, but please continue to pray for us, and I want to say thank you to all of you in the congregation, those who are here, those who are at home, uh, for everything that you all have done to make this a possibility and to make it happen, because um, it's very exciting. Uh, I know we're all very excited uh, we have half of us have been before, half of us are newbies, and so uh, we can't wait to introduce our newbies to this experience and um, just can't wait to serve our own community. Hear these words from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the Spirit of God as it is spoken in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And I want to point something out to you which says that our good works that we walk in, that God prepared them beforehand. I want you to think about that. God prepared the good works that we do beforehand. We think that they're our idea, but they're not our idea. They're God's idea before it was our idea. God prepared this good work that you're doing before he laid the foundation of the earth. And we know we don't do them in order to gain merit with God or to gain salvation. God's already done that for us. We do it to glorify Him and to share the love of Christ. Uh, but we also take confidence and faith in knowing that these are the good works that God has prepared for us to do. He's given us this opportunity to serve and glorify Him. And you know, as y'all know, this, this work camp took this is a long time coming. Um, originally, it was supposed to happen in 2019, but uh, because of some delays, it ended up getting bumped back. And so we are supposed to do it in 2020. Well, y'all all know what happened that year. And so 2021, we come to do it. And y'all might not know this. We had a lot of difficulties in this, too. A few months before it was happening, we had an arrangement with uh, Lexington School District 1 to house them all. And they suddenly backed out and said, no, nope, sorry, we can't do it. We're not going to house you anymore. And so it sent us scrambling to look for another place to host this camp. And it looked like for a while it wasn't going to happen. But when we look back at this and find out that these good works were prepared beforehand, it was going to happen. There was no stopping it because Christ had already prepared this good work for us to do in order to glorify him. There was nothing the world could do. There was nothing Satan could do. There's nothing anybody could do to stop this from happening because this is a work of Jesus Christ. And this was the will of God. And it was going to happen no matter what. So now all of you, by the authority of the Cherokee Presbyterian Church and members of the body of Christ, I hereby commission you to go forth and serve in the cause of the kingdom of God at Work Camp 2021. Do all you do in the name of the Lord Jesus, glorifying God and sharing his love with the world. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon all of your children here, all of your servants that are going forth out into the world to glorify your holy name and to share the love of Jesus Christ with the whole world. Father, I pray a divine anointing upon them. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit pour it out upon them. Lord, I pray that your love would fill their hearts into overflowing. Father, I pray that you guide and direct them every step of the way. 
Lord, we pray a safety upon them, Lord, that none would be harmed in this endeavor. Lord, we pray that all the works they set out to do would be accomplished. But above all this, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified. We pray that your love would be shared. We pray, Father, that the people out there, that some that may not feel that, uh, that they have been uh, regarded by you, that they are forgotten, uh, Lord, but in this time, that they would know, Lord, how special and precious they are in your sight. And above this, Lord, we pray that lives would be transformed in this week, that your will would be done. And by this, we would know the name of our God and Father. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, thank you. And go back to your seats. And, and kids can follow me. Kids follow Liz. Friends, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us, and we even make our God to be a liar. But if we come and we confess our sins, then God shows himself to be merciful and loving and grants us the forgiveness we need for salvation. So I invite you now to come together and let us confess our sins to God first in quiet meditation and our hearts and to God alone and then together as it is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. And now together. Have mercy upon us, O God, sinners in your hands, for we have wandered from your ways and sought the false promises of the world around us. We have sought what is comfortable rather than what is right, what is convenient rather than what is true, what feels good rather than what is good. Help us, Lord, to seek that narrow path upon which our salvation is founded. Forgive us in your mercy and set us again on the ways of righteousness. Guide us by your spirit and direct us by your word. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The proof of God's amazing love is this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly securing by his blood the salvation of our souls. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. We are now going to stand and sing How Great Is Our God.
Please be seated. Our scripture passage today is from Psalm number 8. And before we read this, let us uh, pause for a moment and uh, pray for the Spirit to be here with us and guide us. Good and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the instruction that you have given us by your Spirit. And Father, we also thank you for the Spirit that you give us in order to be able to understand and interpret these things that you have laid out before us. So Father, I pray that you send that Spirit upon us now, Lord, that you open our hearts and minds, that we may hear, that we may read, and that we may understand. Lord, bless this holy reading of your holy word, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. After we read this, there will be a brief moment of quiet meditation. This is Psalm number 8. Listen now to the word of the Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've got a question I want to put out to you. What comes to your mind when you think of great? I'm not talking about a a great work or a great act or, or a great movie, but a great person. What do you think of when you think of a great, I mean a truly great person? I think normally what comes to our mind when we say the word great is something big. Yeah, we're talking about legendary. We're talking about epic. Somebody who who has changed the world. Someone who's engaged in some great, mighty work. You know, I think of somebody like a a Steven Spielberg. Someone who has produced and directed some great movies. Or maybe an Albert Einstein. Someone who who has engaged in great thoughts, who has changed our world completely. Or maybe a great leader or conqueror, something like a, like, like a Julius Caesar. You know, he's done a mighty work. Or maybe somebody who's great at athletics, you know, a Babe Ruth. Considered pro- probably the best baseball player ever to step on the diamond. That's normally what we think of as great. Great, big, powerful, epic, mighty works. Now, when I think about great people, I've always wondered, okay, if they're great... What about the people that made them who they are? What about them? Are they even greater? And I'm talking about the person that first interested Steven Spielberg in movies. Made him who he was. Talking about all those teachers who first taught Albert Einstein math and physics. Or maybe the guy who taught Julius Caesar to tie his shoes. And uh, and about strategy and, and warcraft for the first time. What about the guy, the first person to go out there and get a a ball and a mitt and throw baseball with Babe Ruth? Wouldn't they be considered perhaps even greater? And then if we think about great in our life, usually these big people of history don't even come into the equation of all. I mean, who's greater in your life, the person that taught you to drive or Julius Caesar? Julius Caesar obviously didn't have much impact in your life at all. 
Or who was more important for you? Someone who went to and watched all of your games with you or Albert Einstein? And who's more important in your life? The person that taught you how to play catch for the first time or, or Babe Ruth? I think y'all know who I'm talking about here today, right? I'm talking about dads. I'm talking about fathers. And yes, yes, I know mothers do a lot of those things too. But today's Father's Day, okay? Let's have Father's Day. This is our day. We're talking about the dads today. They do all these great things, but we don't normally think of fathers as great or describe them in the, in the echelon of the great men of history. Why do we do that? Why do we not include them despite this greatness? Is it because there are a lot of deadbeat dads out there who don't do what dads are supposed to do? Or maybe is it because fatherhood is so ordinary and every day we see it all around us? Or maybe society doesn't truly appreciate what fatherhood is and what fatherhood does? Well, I think maybe the reason we don't always think of great when we think of dad is we need to change our idea of what greatness is. See, when we think of greatness, we think of mighty works, but greatness is not just mighty works. And, and no one is greater than God, right? God is the one that's going to set the example of all greatness. And God it does a lot of mighty works, but he's not all mighty works. In fact, some of the greatest works of God are completely invisible. We don't even see them operating, yet Sarah, some of the greatest works that he, that he works in our life. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of mighty works of God. God does lots of mighty things, big things. He's, he's created the galaxies. He's created the stars. He's created all the forces of the universe. And he's done these mighty things, like in the book of Isaiah, where it says, My thoughts are above your thoughts, and my ways are above your ways, as high as the heavens are above the earth. So are my thoughts above your thoughts, and my ways above your ways. But God doesn't do just mighty works. God also does the smaller works. And I'm saying so small, they're invisible. Like DNA. DNA. How many of us have ever seen DNA? Probably none of us have actually seen DNA, but probably one of the most important things working in our body right now. It worked for thousands of years without anybody ever hearing that this thing DNA ever existed. But it's, it's a small, intimate work of God. Your cells, so tiny you can't see them, yet they're just working real hard right now in your body to keep things regulated, to keep things moving like they're supposed to. Just a small, intimate almost personal work of God. It's like what Jesus said of, of his father. Even the hairs of your head are numbered. That's how much God knows you. The hair of your hair, the hairs of your head are numbered. And that he sees every single sparrow that falls upon the earth. See, this too is part of God's greatness. See, the greatness of God is not just in his mighty works but it's also in his personal love. And that's what I want you to remember today, is that the greatness of God is not just about his mighty works, but the greatness of God is also in his personal love. And that's the greatness that we see displayed here in Psalm number 8. The full greatness of God here on display for us to see. Now this psalm is what we would classify as a praise psalm. As it's a psalm of praise, one of the most uh, common genres that we get in the book of Psalms. A, a psalm that is just talking about how great and how awesome and how wonderful our God is. And uh, this one, we do know who the author is. It was written by King David. It says at the beginning of the psalm, if you look at it in the Bible, a psalm eight of David. So King David actually wrote this song, this psalm. And in it, he's talking about the full greatness of God. How God takes care of these mighty things, and at the same time, He takes care of the personal things. Well, it starts out just talking about how great and how, how powerful God is. It starts out verse 1, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is Your name in all the earth. You have set Your glory above the heavens, and out of the mouths of babies and infants You have established strength because of Your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. So it talks out with the big, big words of praise. Lord, how majestic, how majestic is your name in all the earth. 
And, and when we think of majestic or majesty, royalty is what should first come to mind. This, this, this royalty and this divine authority. And it says, Lord, you're, you, you are so great and you got so much majesty. Your name, just, just your name itself is majestic. We're not even getting into your person yet or your works. Just the very name of God is majestic. And it says you, you have set your glory above the heavens. And if you look at the heavens, you know, they're that space that's higher than the earth, that's above the earth. And this is not only just the realm above the earth, this is also the realm of the spirits, the spiritual realm. This is the seat of authority. And everything in the heavens is above and greater than the earth. But it says, Lord, your majesty is above the heavens. So as, as great and as authoritative and as awesome as these heavens are, Lord, you even go higher than that. That not only is your name majestic, your glory and your greatness is above even the heavens themselves as high as though he those heavens are. And then David gives us this, this kind of cryptic phrase. He says, out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established power. He says, and you do it to still the enemy and the avenger. As in, he's going to quiet his enemies. He's going to shut them up. He's going to put them down. He's going to defeat his enemies out of the mouths of babies and infants. Now, normally when someone says the phrase, out of the mouths of babies and infants, that's when a kid says something really clever or wise or really precocious, and it makes us sit back and think for a minute, like, oh, man, how did he come out with that? And so he's, oh, out of the mouths of babies and infants. But what it says in the psalm is, out of the mouths and babies and infants, you have established power to still your enemy. So how does God use what comes out of the mouth of a baby or an infant to quiet his enemies and to establish power? Now, I've got two answers for that. One is maybe the appropriate official answer, and the one, other one's kind of a flaky answer. Maybe a sentimental answer is better, but... I'm going to give you the official one first, okay? All God needs to establish His power, because His glory is so great, because His majesty is so great, all that He needs is the mouth of a baby. As in, He can take the most helpless creature in the whole earth, and there's nothing more helpless than a baby. All right? They can do nothing. I mean, most animals can do something when they're born. Babies, they can do nothing. They can't even feed themselves. It says that in Hebrew, it's a nursing infant, a weaning infant, one that still is, is drinking its mother's milk. This is so helpless. But God says, I can take this helpless infant, and I can establish my power. I can do anything I want. All I, that's all I need to work on this earth is the mouth of a baby or infant. As in, if you want to stand against me, okay, you take the armies, you take the weapons, you take the strongest people in the world, and you just give me a baby, all right? And I like those odds. I can do whatever I need to out of the mouth of a baby and an infant. That is how great the glory of God is. All right, that's the official answer. All right, you want to hear my sentimental one? What comes out of the mouth of a baby that is powerful? Think about that. Is there anything that comes out of the mouth of a little infant that you can think of as powerful besides its cry? Because we know that it's powerful. But I think there's something more powerful coming out of a baby than, than this cry. And I think it's just laughter. Have you ever heard a baby laugh? I'm, not, I'm talking about not even a toddler, when they're still not even walking. When, when the baby laughs for the first time like a true, like real belly laugh, when they're, when they're just, just giggling uncontrollably. Have you ever heard that? That is the most joyful sound in the entire universe. That is probably the purest sound of joy you'll ever hear in your life. There's no pretension. There's no malice. There's no forethought. The only thing you find in a baby who's laughing is just a pure expression of joy. And that's all they're expressing. And, and I think that is so powerful that I firmly believe that, that Satan hates that sound. That Satan hates the sound of a baby laughing. And in fact, the only thing that he hates more than that is the sound of Christ on the lips of a believer. He hates it so much, he will flee from it. And if you don't believe me, I challenge you to try to be depressed while listening to a baby laugh. Okay? It is impossible. You cannot be sad and depressed while listening to a baby laugh. You can before and maybe right after, but while you're listening to it, no, it's impossible. 
It's impossible because the devil flees from that sound. That is out of the mouth of the baby, God establishing his power. And he can still the enemy just using that. Because I think that is the closest sound we'll ever get on earth to hearing the laughter of God. But either way you look at it, if you want to take my official, more appropriate answer, my solemn answer, or my sentimental flaky one, either way, God's glory and God's great is so much and so powerful. He establishes it out of the mouths of babies and infants. But His greatness isn't just about these mighty works. God's greatness is not just about mighty works. It is also about these personal works and His personal love towards us. At verse 3, the, the psalm takes a turn. He says, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? And see, so here's David. He, he's going out and he's looking at the stars. He's looking at these mighty works of God. Just these, these big, massive works that God has done. And he suddenly asks his question in himself. He says, who am I? I mean, I know he says, what is man? But when we talk about that, we're always talking about ourselves. And he says, who am I? You made all of this. And yet you still regard me? You, you still think of me? And I'm still on your heart and I'm still on your mind after you've done all this story. Who am I? Who am I that you would regard me, Lord? And, and he's even not only regarded us, he's given us a glory. It says you've set us a little lower than the heavenly beings. You might have heard it before as, as that you set us a little lower than the angels. So you've not just regarded us. You've not just thought of us, Lord, but you gave us this glory that we are just a little bit lower than the heavenly beings and you've given us authority, and you've given us this power over all the earth, over the beast of the field, over the seas. You did all that for us? And we did nothing to deserve it? We didn't earn it. We didn't apply for this job. We didn't show our qualifications beforehand with, the, with a nice resume about, oh, I will be really good. Give me the authority. I see you can be tr I can be trusted Look at all these other things that I've done. He just, he just gave it to us. And he knows each and every one of us. And, and it says the same God that made the galaxy is the same one in Psalm 139 where he says, I, I knit you together in your mother's womb. As he, as he made that whole galaxy and he, just, and he also built you piece by piece still in your mother's womb. And, and the same God that set the course of the stars is the one that set the course of your life and watches over your life still today. And the same God that knows the secrets of the universe, He knows you better than you know yourself. And this God whose glory is even above the heavens themselves, He cares for you and He loves you so much that He would send His Son to die on your behalf. This is the greatness of God. And this is why we call God Father, but we also call Him Abba. And you see that word appear in the Bible every once in a while. It says, Abba, Father. And Abba is the same thing as Father, but it's an intimate word for your father. It's like Dad, or Daddy, or Papa. And so God does the great things, the mighty works, which is the, the Father stuff. And then He does the personal things. The little things, the intimate love, the dad stuff. And this is what genuine fatherhood is about. This is what genuine fatherhood really means. And I know here on earth, we don't always do it well. Here on earth, we don't always get it right. Sometimes it's neglected 100% and completely, and that truly is a tragedy. And even, I can tell you honestly, I try to be a good father, but I know, I know, I know 100% that right now I am doing something that one day my kids are going to tell their therapist about. <laughs> I just know it. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know what it is, but one day their therapists are going to, they're going to talk to me about their therapist. There's something that I am doing today. But pursuing this genuine fatherhood, this father and dad, that is what 
the Father is supposed to do. And they're supposed to do the, the mighty works. They're supposed to take care of the business, to, to provide, to protect their families, to work for them, to keep things working around the house and in the yard. That's, that's the Father's stuff. But at the same time, not to neglect the personal things, the little things. Throwing ball in the backyard. Teaching you how to drive. Getting up in the middle of the night to check on a fever. That's the dad stuff. We call them little things. But the older I get, the more I realize how big they are. Those might be the biggest things of all. And how much they meant to me growing up. I had a wonderful example of a father in my life. And uh, praise God, he's still here with us today. And he's a great example of being a dad. He did these things. He, he worked hard. But I tell you, the only thing I remember about my dad working hard is him coming home. And let me tell you, that wasn't always a good thing. Okay? Sometimes he came home with the warning of, wait till your dad gets home. But I remember my dad working hard. I remember him coming home after he worked hard. But what I remember more than that was taking me to football games. That's something we always had, going to football games together. And how blessed I was to have a father that loved me enough to make sure that I was a Gamecock. <laughs> that is love. I mean, not every kid gets that. They just grew up pulling for just whoever's out there. I'm sorry you're like that, but I'm glad Terry Cheatham in here today. So. <laughs> I had a father that provided for us. But he also made sure that we sat down every night and ate at a family. And he was there every night sitting at the head of the table. I had a father that kept things working around the house. And in fact, he kept things working so well, I thought things just worked by themselves. I grew up thinking that air conditioners never broke down and roofs never leaked. But let me tell you, that was a, that was a, a rude awakening when I realized that that took a lot of work and effort to keep all those things going. But he also taught me how to run a near post and a button hook, how to use a knife without cutting my finger off, shoot a gun without blowing my fingers off. And to walk in waders without drowning. And to me, that is greatness. That is greatness. And I dare any Steven Spielberg or Albert Einstein or Julius Caesar to try to compete with that. I dare them to even try. But this is the example that first God has given to us. A God who made this whole world from nothing and yet he takes time to know you as well maybe we have greatness all wrong maybe greatness is not about doing mighty works maybe greatness is taking time to do all the things that really matter to do everything that matters from the galaxy all the way down to the cell from working hard all the way down to wiping noses from paying bills all the way down to braiding hair. And guys, if you have daughters, learn how to braid hair, okay? It might not seem like a lot, but trust me, it is a bigger deal than you'll know. Learn how to braid hair. And we do that because the same God who put the moon and the stars in the sky is the same God that knows you and loves you intimately. The God whose glory is above the heaven is the God who regards each and every one of us and who delights in who each and every one of us is. Friends, this is the heart of God. This is the heart of the Father. This is the heart of Dad. This is greatness. To God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will you pray with me? Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Father, we come to you today and we thank you for being a great Father to us. And we also, Lord, thank you for being a great Dad. We thank you for all the mighty works you have done in our life. And we thank you, Lord, for the ways that you know us intimately and lovingly. And Father, we 
come to you knowing that our life and our world and our whole universe is only sustained by your grace and by your good pleasure. And so we come and we ask for you to pour your grace and to pour that delight upon us today. Father, we pray that you would be present in all the mighty works of the world, that you would continue to sustain this world, that you would sustain this universe, that you would still give us provision, air to breathe every day, patterns of weather that make the crops grow, the nutrition for the earth, rain from the sky. We pray, Lord, that you would lead our nation and our leaders, and that you would continue to guide and guard all of us and all creation to its ultimate destiny. And Father, we ask you today also that you would work in personal ways in each and every one of the lives of the people here. Father, that you would guard us and protect us, that you would watch over our steps and all of our ways. Lord, that you would remind us of the great love that you bear for us, or that you would never let us walk beyond of your love and your care. And Father, we ask that you look over all of those that need healing today, and we pray for Stuart and for Terry and for Lauren and for Maddie, and pray a mighty healing and comfort be upon their hearts. Father, we thank you today for all fathers and for all dads, and we thank you for the heart that you have put upon them. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen them and protect them and remind us, Lord, of not only the big things that need to get done, but that we not neglect any of the little things as well. And by the little things, Lord, those big examples of great love that we have the opportunity to share with others. And Father, we ask and pray our prayers upon the work camp this week. We pray for all the youth and the leaders involved. We pray all those that are traveling from distant places that they would arrive safely. We pray, Father, that there would be uh, no injuries this week, but everyone would come through safely. We pray that all the projects would get finished on time. But more than that, Lord, we pray that lives would be changed, that souls and spirits transformed, and above all, your name would be lifted on high. Father, we pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Of all the works God does, both mighty and small, we are privileged as a church and His people to be a part of it. And as we're privileged also as God's church and God's people to be a part of God's works as well. And one of the ways that we are part and share in God's works is giving a small portion of the great abundance that He has given us back to our God and our Father. Uh, there are many ways that you can give here at Cherokee Presbyterian. Uh, We have offering plates at the back on either side of the door as you exit the sanctuary. Uh, You can also give through Venmo, PayPal, ACH Bank Draft, or through United States Postal Service. And we thank you for supporting both the mighty and the personal works of God here on earth. And now in response of thanksgiving to all that God has given us, let us stand and sing our offertory response, Created Me a Clean Heart. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have given us. And we come here today and give back a small portion of the great abundance with which you have blessed us with. Father, I pray that you would bless both the gift and the giver, and that these gifts be used for your glory and for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Now we're going to remain standing and say what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Friends, what is it you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing hymn number 467, How Great Thou Art. We are going to sing verse 1, chorus, verse 2 and 3, chorus, and then 4 and chorus.
Now, my friends, go forth as the children of glory and take hope in the love that God bears for you. And now may the Father of all creation and the Dad of your heart shield you and guide you all the days of your life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.